2022 was Chip Kelly's best season yet at UCLA. The Bruins went 9-4 and four and were in Pac-12 title contention well into November. But now the Bruins lose tons of production from that team. The million-dollar question now heading into 2023 is whether or not the Bruins will continue to build or if they're going to take a little bit of a step back. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. We're so glad that you could join us today as we break down everything you need to know for UCLA football heading into the 2023 college football season. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below, including our expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com, beating out over 80% of the national handicappers each of the last five years. It's a guaranteed winnings back in your pocket. We can guarantee you a winning season. We can guarantee that you will win big time money. Take advantage of it, guys. One of the lowest prices in the country for some of the best picks in the country. Take advantage of it today. Take advantage of our Patreon account as well. Exclusive college football content that you won't find anywhere else. It can only be found on Patreon. We're going to have you covered there year round. Become a member of our Patreon wall of fame. And also, check out the mailing address down in the description below. Send us some gear to be represented in every single GE video from now through eternity. Every single video represent your team. You'll, of course, get a shout out for that as we try to continue to expand our GE nation from coast to coast. So let's take a look at UCLA. I love the Bruins. I love Chip Kelly. And I love this team last year. They were phenomenal. 39.2 points per game on offense. Again, best mark yet under Chip Kelly offensively, best season yet under Chip Kelly, but now they lose their star quarterback in Dorian Thompson-Robinson. They lose their star running back in Zach Charbonnet, and they lose their top wide receiver as well. So you lose your top passer, your top rusher, your top wide receiver, really top two rushers because Dorian Thompson-Robinson was right behind Charbonnet, and you're like, God, what do we do offensively now? Well, the Bruins have talent there, right? We think they're probably going to turn to the big five-star recruit in Dante Moore, who to me feels like the perfect fit for this Chip Kelly-led offense. He feels like a great, great fit and I think could succeed rather quickly despite being a freshman. So the quarterback position has some question marks but has a lot of potential, a lot of upside. The running back position, they filled that through the transfer portal. Carson Steele transferring in from Ball State after rushing for over 1,500 yards last year with the Cardinals. Cam Brown also returns at wide receiver. They lose their top two, UCLA does. Cam Brown was third on the team, but is going to become the probably top target for whoever plays quarterback. And again, we believe that will be Dante Moore. Defensively, we've said it over and over again through these Pac-12 predictions, this might be the best defense Chip Kelly has had yet. Certainly most experienced. Nine starters back for the Bruins on that side of the ball. They gave up 29 points per game last year. They gave up 273 passing yards per game. But if the Bruins can you know, improve their passing defense, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. They're not going to really get run over. They've just got to fix the passing defense. I think they will improve ever so slightly this year. You take a look at UCLA's schedule. It's not horrible. Uh, one thing that really stands out to me is the fact they avoid Oregon. That is a huge, huge benefit for them. Of course, they do have to play Utah. They do have to play USC, but they do not play Washington. They do not play Oregon. So it's a big benefit for the Bruins here as they try to find themselves back in Pac-12 title contention. I'll tell you right now, I think they start 3-0. Like that, give them three wins. Uh, Coastal Carolina and San Diego State are certainly no slouches. San Diego State on the road, certainly no slouch either. But talent-wise, I think UCLA has the benefit there. Uh, Coastal Carolina dealing with a brand-new coach. First game, going to go all the way across the country to the Rose Bowl. Don't like their odds there, despite having a great quarterback in Grayson McCall. San Diego State, strong defense, offense abysmal. If the UCLA defense lives up to their hype, San Diego State won't score much. They should beat the Aztecs. They'll beat NC Central. So they're 3-0 going into conference play, and it starts on the road at Utah, where I believe they take their first loss of the year. They fell to the Utes, uh, excuse me, beat the Utes 42-32 to last year. It was a massive win for the Bruins. Kind of, I think, let people know that, hey, UCLA is legit. You know, they're, they're you know, kind of show that, hey, we are not a slouch. We are not to be disregarded. We can win big games. And they did that against the Utes last year by 10 points, putting up over 500 yards of offense against that defense, including 203 on the ground. But now the game's in Salt Lake City against a Utah team that also conveniently returns nine starters defensively going to be an elite force per usual under Kyle Whittingham. Utah and Salt Lake City, they're 26 and 2 at home over the course of the last five years. I don't think UCLA and what's going to really be their first true road test, especially with a young team and a young offense, can handle this Utah defense. They take that loss to the Utes and they're 3 and 1 heading into their early bye week. Got to play eight straight games to close out the year. Out of the bye week, they come home to play Washington State. These two teams have not met since 2019. 
And that was when the Bruins had staged the epic comeback, down 49-17 to in the third quarter, and battled all the way back to win that game. And to me, that was the turning point of the Chip Kelly era, right? Because if UCLA loses that game, they had, what, like a 3-9 and nine season in his first year? If they lose that game, UCLA starts 0-6 in 2019. And who knows? Maybe he gets fired. Maybe he gets let go. The Bruins ultimately finished 4-8, and eight, but that turning point seemed to be where it kind of helped us get to where we are now for UCLA. And that might be a stretch, but at that time, I truly believe it. I mean, starting 0-6, that's no joke. But they're at home against the Cougars team, guys. That's good. That's, without a doubt, a bowl team, but still a ways away from being a legitimate Pac-12 title contender. I think at home, off that week of rest, UCLA takes advantage of that Washington State defense. I think that run game for UCLA is going to be severely underrated once again. I think they're going to have enough to exploit the Cougars in this game. I don't have too much faith in Cam Ward and that Washington State offense, especially one that loses their top four pass catchers from last year. Don't have much faith in them getting much going against this Bruins defense. So UCLA gets their first conference win of the year. They're four and one, and then they get into the meat of the schedule, right? That's where it starts to get really tough. On the road at Oregon State on October 14th, that's a tough one. Corvallis has not become an easy place to play under Jonathan Smith. The Beavers are 12 and one at home over the last two years. Their only loss was last year in the final minute to USC in a three-point loss to the Trojans. So I look at Oregon State, guys. They got a, uh, they got an improvement at quarterback, an upgrade at quarterback with DJ Uyungle. Their running back core returns intact with Damian Martinez and Deshaun Fenwick, a team that rushed for over 196 rushing yards per game. And the defense, perennially, at least the last few years under Jonathan Smith, has been pretty dang solid. They're pretty good solidly defensively, especially up front. I'll give them that. So if Oregon State comes in here and bottles up that UCLA run game, can Dante Moore come in and win the game solely by himself through the air? That's the question. His first true test on the road or against two of the teams in the Pac-12 that have some of the biggest home field advantages. I don't like that for a young quarterback, assuming Moore, of course, gets the nine. I'm going to give the edge to the Beavers here. I think they get the job done. This defense is very, very good. UCLA's offense a little young, and that's going to be a very, very tough road environment for them to take uh, to, to handle, so just like the Salt Lake City game would be when they play Utah on September 23rd. So they take their second loss of the year, second conference loss there. That might automatically eliminate them from Pac-12 title contention because in a conference with Oregon, Washington, USC, guys like that, two losses, going to be tough to find yourself into that top two. But Hope's not all lost yet. Still, they're hanging in there. They get back-to-back -back road games at Oregon State, at Stanford. Stanford's an easy win, in my eyes. Uh, they beat Stanford by 25 points last year, 38-13. to 13. The Cardinal returned just six starters, brand-new coach, quarterback battle going on between two guys that have 31 pass attempts combined in their collegiate career. It's going to be a rough season for Stanford. UCLA shouldn't have an issue handling that, and they get a massive road victory and then they come home to take on Colorado who they also would have beat rather easily they beat them 45 to 17 last year Colorado went 1 and 11 and while they will be more competitive than they were last year with all these new transfers coming in and the hype that Deion Sanders is bringing to the program they're not a team that's going to automatically come in and start taking down legitimate Pac-12 contenders it's just not going to happen so the Buffaloes improve their win total they're more competitive but they do not in my eyes have nearly enough to come on the road to take down Chip Kelly and UCLA it's not happening so just like that Bruins get two wins in a row following that win uh, loss excuse me against Oregon State and they're still looking pretty good they're still looking pretty dang good they've got six wins now so they're going bowling that was never in doubt now what else can they do in these final couple games they go on the road to Arizona to kick off the month of November. That, to me, is a major, major trap game. Feels weird saying that, right? And I don't know if I necessarily feel that way if Arizona hadn't beat UCLA last year. UCLA, guys, was number nine in the country. They had their sights set not just on a Pac-12 title, but maybe even the college football playoff if they have been able to win out. And Arizona walked into the Rose Bowl and won 34-28. Unbelievable. The, one of the more shocking upsets of last season that I don't think we were talking about nearly enough. So the way I view this now, if you look at this Arizona team, Jaden Delora is back at quarterback, threw for over 318 yards per game last year. Michael Wiley is back at running back. Arizona pretty much returns everybody offensively. Eight starters back on that side of the ball. If Arizona can stroll into the Rose Bowl and win last year with an Arizona team that in theory is a little bit better than they were last year, why can't they now win at home in Tucson with a better team they had last year against a UCLA team that loses their top quarterback, their top running back, and their top wide receiver? I don't see how that can be the case. I'm giving Arizona this win here over the Bruins. Maybe UCLA does get revenge 
Maybe they find a way. I think you're going to see a lot of points scored in this game. But I'm going to lean towards Arizona, who at this point in the year is going to be fighting for their bowl lives. And they'd love nothing more than to play spoiler to UCLA season once again. Last year was a massive upset. This year, maybe not as massive as it was last year. Still big enough. UCLA drops a stunner in Tucson. They bounce back against the other Arizona team, though. They'll beat the Sun Devils back in Los Angeles. They beat them 50-36 to last year. Although they allowed 468 yards of offense to them, I don't see that being the case this year, especially with an improved defense. And Arizona State obviously going through some growing pains with the addition of Kenny Dillingham, their new coach, new quarterback, Andrew Pine, and a defense that's just going to be downright awful. So UCLA should win convincingly over the Sun Devils. And then, just like that, they've got seven wins, closing out the year against two in-state programs at USC at home against California. USC is obviously the big one, right? The battle for Los Angeles, the battle for LA. And now, you know, as compared to last year, it doesn't have as too big a stakes. The stakes certainly, I would believe at this point, will be bigger for USC. The Trojans are expected to contend for a Pac-12 title. They're expected to contend for the college football playoff. At this point now, with a handful of losses, three losses, UCLA is taken out of probably both of those equations. They could play spoiler to their rival. Absolutely could. Almost did last year only losing 48-45. to 45. Problem was their defense gave up 649 yards of offense to Caleb Williams and the Trojans. Couldn't stop them. So back and forth game, but ultimately when it comes down to a shootout, which defense gets the better stop? Which one gets the most stops? Last year, it was USC. This year, I also believe it to be USC. I don't think UCLA's offense is going to be as strong as it was last year. So you might not see as many fireworks on the Bruins this year. The games in the Coliseum, to me, that doesn't give them a huge major home field advantage, but more advantage than playing at the Rose Bowl. Uh, you know, UCLA does not at least have that home field advantage in this game. Caleb Williams is back. Some of their top pass catchers are back. Austin Jones is back and running back. This offense is probably going to be the best in the country and will be the toughest test that this UCLA improved defense has seen all year long. I don't think the Bruins have an answer for it. They drop their fourth game of the year to USC and then close the season out against California, a team that to me is quite the anomaly. We don't know what to expect from the Golden Bears this year. The defense should be better. The offense, in theory, should be better if they can work out who their quarterback's going to be. Last year, the Golden Bears nearly beat UCLA. We're actually leading 28-27 to in the fourth quarter before UCLA scored the game-winning touchdown with 7.53 remaining in the game. So they won 35-28. Cal hung with them. I think it happens again, especially if California is fighting for their bowl berth. This game could determine whether Cal goes bowling or not. But UCLA is not going to allow it to happen, especially on senior day. And again, across the board, California is inferior to the Bruins. They're inferior offensively, they're inferior defensively, and they are in the coaching aspect as well. Chip Kelly will not lose this game. And with that, UCLA finishes the year at 8-4. and four. All things considered, not a bad season, right? Especially with as much as they lost offensively. That's three straight years of at least eight wins. They went 8-4 and four in 2021, didn't get to play in their bowl game, went 9-3 and three in the regular season last year, lost their bowl game to Pittsburgh in upset fashion, and now they go 8-4 and four again this year with another shot at a nine-win season. Uh, obviously, you can make the argument, maybe they beat Oregon State. Maybe they beat Arizona. I think the ceiling for this team is 9-3. and three. I don't think they can exceed last year's win total. But the Bruins certainly are a force to be reckoned with. They're a team you do not want to overlook. They're not the same UCLA team that we saw early on at Chip Kelly's tenure. This is a team that is scary good, and they're one or two upsets away from being a legitimate Pac-12 title contention well into November. I love this team. I love what Chip Kelly's doing. He's building something there. We asked that question at the beginning. Do the Bruins keep building, or do they take a big step back? They keep building. They're not going anywhere anytime soon. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in our description below, including our expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Make sure to take advantage of those for guaranteed winnings this college football season. Check out our Patreon account for exclusive college football content year-round, and of course, our mailing address to send us some gear to become a part of our GE Nation as we expand it from coast to coast. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.